What's up guys, JV2017 here, and I'm super excited to bring you my first Wasteland Workshop DLC video. And for this first video, I thought it would make sense to do a basic overview of every new item in the DLC. This will give some of you still wondering if you should buy the DLC in the first place a good idea of what you're paying for if you decide to. On the other hand, if you've already got Wasteland Workshop through the Season Pass or something like that, I hope this video provides a basic rundown of how each new item works. Before we begin, I want to point out that this video became a lot longer than I expected to, so I've left timestamps in the description below. If you're looking for something specific like cages towards the end of the video, check the description, click on that timestamp, and it'll bring you to whatever you're looking for. So let's hop into Sanctuary and start building. First, we're going to take a look at all of the new structures, and there are a few options in here. The big one is concrete. So now you can build with all of these concrete options. I'm going to go ahead and lay the foundation for this floor here so you kind of have all of these of course cost steel and concrete kind of have this graded kind of uh you know type of floor here the same kind of deal a little more transparent actually it is transparent and then that middle bar in the middle so kind of a you know a nice mix of these they look a lot more industrial and i like how they're not broken like a lot of the other kind of floors and you know wooden building options and whatnot we also have of course a concrete foundation so if you're on an uneven surface like this as you can tell it's very easy to build a cool kind of uh, flat surface there. So we also have upper floors. So you can put these, actually you can't put them on the ground. Obviously this would work better with a wall. So we're gonna go ahead and do that when we go to the walls. And then you have these curved floors, which is nice because we haven't had curved options before, um, you know, from the vanilla game, not, you know, including modding. So obviously you can make kind of a curve section there and then there's some railings that i'll put on there too so that's kind of a really cool option there and then we have even smaller options here so if you wanted to make some kind of very small path uh, you can do that there's also some short versions of walls so you can make a very very crowded uh you know kind of path there angled floors as well add some new options whoops <laughs> that was not intentional go ahead there we go so angled floor right there, you can do that. There's also a cool option for walls that I'll show you guys right here. So that's what we have in terms of floors. Now we've got walls. So the concrete wall, again, is very structured. Um, when you compare it to you know, some of the wooden walls and the metal walls, they've got holes and whatnot. This is pure concrete. So you're not worrying about any of those kind of issues. Then you have a, you know, a clear doorway here that you can add a door to, which is nice. Then you have kind of almost like a window, so you can see clear through this, the grate, kind of like with uh, some of the flooring options as well. A different kind of window here, so kind of some steel bars, almost looks like a prison. And then you've got these small walls here, and you can kind of, the cool thing with these is you can put them kind of in the middle, they'll kind of snap in the middle of normal walls at different intervals. So you can really kind of, uh, you know, do some interesting variations without modding, for example, if you were going to go that route. You know, you can put a wall right there. You know, if you really wanted to do that and then put one right there. So, you know, just giving us more options in that sense. And then you've got these pillars, obviously, to support a second floor. We'll make a second floor in a second. So you've got an angled wall. This is absolutely new. And this kind of should snap with the, the angled floor. At least I think it would. Yeah. So see, you can tell it's flat on this side, but angled on the wall. And so you can do have a lot more different interesting building options and clearly you know the angled floor goes well with the angled wall so if you that's kind of the option you wanted in terms of building you could definitely go for that and let's see any more building wall options of course there are there's the curved wall so obviously this would go really well with the curved floor right here if you wanted to go that route let's see so it snaps on just like that and then it might not be able to fit because of you know what I've got going on over here let's go ahead and remove this just to show you guys exactly how this should snap on there so curved wall again so all of these different structures and kind of different variations of walls really kind of give you a lot more options than you had before just through the vanilla game which is really cool so moving on to roofs we're going to go ahead and check these out so kind of had this almost looks like a shingle roof but it's more structured again that's kind of the nice thing about uh, the concrete building options and then this has kind of great kind of see-through as well so if you wanted to put this on the inside of a building that would make sense maybe not for the roof of a building unless you wanted rain to come through let's see what was i going to show you guys before oh yeah it was the second floor so upper floor right here so this would also work you know it's actually it almost looks like the same as the roof there so i don't know why that's the case actually it's not the same it's got uh, some extra kind of padding up there and so 
those are your roofing options for concrete. Let's go ahead and get to the second level with some concrete steps. Go ahead and snap that on. So that's our only like true staircase. And then you've got these small concrete steps that you can kind of put on the side. If you, uh, you know, have some kind of uneven surface, let's try this out with anyways, you guys get the point. If you need a small little step to get up to somewhere, that's how this works. Let's see. There we go. That makes the most sense right there. Aha. So if you're on an uneven surface, that small staircase is good. Good option there. And then you have a lot of railing options, which is pretty cool. So I guess we should go to the second floor to look at these. So if you have some kind of open area, again, this is the difference between the, the second floor and then just the roof. The roof is, you know, a lot more industrial and whatnot. So there we go. Got some solid railing right there and then some curved railing. If you decide to, you know, let's go ahead and try this out. Let's go and make some curved flooring. Just kind of on the end here like so and then some curved rails go ahead and uh, put that right there so kind of a curved railing so again just more more uh more structures more options and then you've got small rails so if you wanted to use these small rails as opposed to other rails for whatever reason and then these rails that kind of snap on the side of the uh of the of the structure so here let me try to get them to snap Snap for me. Come on. You could do it. There we go. So it kind of snaps on the side there as opposed to just standing on top of whatever you're trying to snap a rail to. So that's all we have for concrete building options. We've also got some new powered doors. So just like normal doors, except they require some sort of power in order to function, obviously. So we're going to go ahead and set up some of these doors. We've got this first option and they all open in a different kind of way. So let me go ahead and set up kind of a, uh, a surrounding kind of thing so we can see all of them there we go and go ahead and attach all of these together so as you can tell this requires some kind of switch it does require power so I mean if you were just to hook it up to a generator it would stay open at all times but if you had some kind of switch or also a pressure pad I'm sure that would work as well you could just step on it and the door would open which would be pretty cool so obviously everything's on right now if I Whoops, wrong button. I get out of this mode. If I go ahead and turn off the power, they close. So you can use this in a lot of different ways, you know, with traps and whatnot, if you want to do that. So let's just go ahead and look at each of these doors. So this one kind of has some kind of, um, I forget how to describe that, some kind of pulley, you know, weighted system, which is pretty cool. And it just opens to the left. This one goes to each side, which is pretty cool. This one over here also does the same thing but looks like it's just a different color which is you know pretty standard and then also same thing over there just a different color so you got all these different options for power doors very very cool the final set of new items in the structures category are found under miscellaneous all the way to the right past all these new items they added in a free update i think and they are buses and trailers so i saw this in the trailer for wasteland workshop and i was thinking yeah maybe these are new i don't remember being able to build these no you couldn't build these before so you may be wondering why the hell would you want to build a bunch of buses and trailers for some reason this bus doesn't want to there we go why would you want to build these you know this is kind of weird why would you want to do this well, I mean, I guess you could use it for decor decorative purposes. You know, if you wanted to make a really cool kind of tree house, I know a lot of people make cool tree houses out of this tree and uh, kind of put a bus on top of it or something on, you know, a flat surface. If you were to make that, that'd be really cool. But also you could just hop inside, you know, this bus here. And then if I go out and go to furniture, for example, I can build a small bed in here. And so it's like you could make this as your housing or do something really unique with these structures but now you can build buses and a trailer let's see can you go inside of the trailer you sure can so you can go up in here and you know make a little bed make some kind of something to store something I mean there's so many uses you can have for these buses and trailers but hey if you got enough glass enough steel you know those kind of things you can build these giant things moving on now we're gonna look at some of the new decorations unfortunately there is no furniture just want to let you guys know there's no more furniture options offered in this DLC so under the decorations tab go over to miscellaneous and this is where you'll be able to find all of the new items so scrolling all the way to the left let's go ahead and look at the first one which is a campfire kind of nice you know little thing to have there kind of nice little touch if you want more of a uh a less structured kind of looking settlement you can absolutely do that we've got some candles we can uh you know kind of put around certain places pretty cool don't require really anything i don't know how you can make a candle with oil and cloth but 
I guess I guess that makes sense actually. Never mind. That was probably stupid. Anyways, <laughs> so there we go. Lots of candles right there. Also cat bulls. And of course, we're going to see a little bit later in the video. There are cages. That's like a huge thing with this DLC being able to trap, you know, creatures and whatnot. You can trap a cat. So plenty of cat bulls there. That's kind of like an evil satanic shrine I've just created. I don't know why. Moving on. Got some fire barrels. So if you wanted to make your, you know, encampment more raider style than whatnot, this would definitely uh, do the trick right there with these fire barrels. Got a few more items here. We've got some oil lamps. So if you wanted to light up your area with some uh, more old timey oil lamp kind of items, that's for you. And also, I really like these oil lamp posts. So you can kind of line these, for example, along sanctuary and then you know in the night probably looks really cool in fact we're gonna switch the night on in a second here to kind of see how these look because i have a feeling they look pretty freaking sweet so let's go ahead and do that real quick hop out of this go ahead and set to midnight yeah see that looks really cool these fire barrows also look really cool yeah see this is this is definitely what i'm going to be doing whenever i create like a settlement um, for myself and probably show it off to you guys but that's pretty much what we have in terms of decorations next up is the power category and we've got a ton of new things to look at with power so we're going to go ahead and hop into generators because as a lot of you pointed out in my breakdown video this was something i actually missed was the fusion generator this thing right here and this is essentially what you can find out in the world that you'll find little power uh cores in you know right here not power cores fusion cells you guys know so that produces 100 power absolutely insane this is far and away better than any other generator option we have the closest one is the large generator which is 100. the thing is it has a lot of kind of material requirements but to be honest they're not too you know ridiculous and it does have a science 4 requirement which is level 41 so you have to be quite a far along in the playthrough if you decide to play through a game and then want to you know pimp out your settlement with these so definitely worth your time definitely worth the investment in my opinion so that's the new kind of generator generator we have no new connectors and uh, switches but we do have a ton of new lights so let's go ahead and look at these I'm gonna scroll through here now so We've got a track light for the ground, so obviously you're going to want to put that on here. And this is just, you know, obviously a little option here. Let's see. How would I... Okay. Go ahead and connect this to this. Aha. So those kind of track lighting on the ground, you can do that if you wish. Some bigger track lights to also put on walls, however. Right? No? Okay. So these are for ceiling use, as I discovered after roaming around my settlement like a madman trying to figure out what the hell was going on these are for ceiling use so there we go got some nice walls lights on the ceiling and that kind of thing got a row of track lights so if you want to get fancy schmancy with your lighting on roof you can do that subway light looks pretty cool nice and bright i like you know the addition of a nice bright uh you know lighting options here got a lot of nice standing lamps so I'm gonna show you guys uh, all these different options here a nice fluorescent light which is cool because you know more of an industrial feel we saw this in the trailer so those look very cool can see a lot of cool different rec rooms and stuff like that that people could create with those where can I put this fan that wouldn't obstruct with anything else there we go we've already got the ceiling fan just kidding that's not new string of lights same kind of thing a little more casual that's a cool option there. Fancy wall light. Damn, that is fancy. Look at the fanciness. Wow. So fancy. Ooh, I would call this an even fancier wall light. That's impressive. Then we got these more modern options, more simplistic. I guess I should probably place this where there's going to be some power. Yeah. As so. And I oh, might as well just put one right here. Yeah. Just like that. That doesn't look terrible or anything another light go ahead and place this right there beautiful beautiful and then some table lamps obviously we need some tables but I'm just gonna put them on the ground blue and yellow different options there and then we have a traffic light which I really like kind of a cool interesting option there and it cycles between all of the colors very cool very cool so street light this is also very cool just look at the sheer size of this thing like compared to these other things let's see go ahead and connect this yeah that's crazy we're gonna turn off the uh the 
or not turn off turn off the night turn off the day we're not going to turn off the sun we're going to turn the turn it back to midnight in just a second here cool lots of different street light options and then one more cage light on the wall if you want this sort of thing just kind of hanging around like that okay let's go ahead and connect these street lights turn the sun off and see what it looks like and there we go this is what these look like so nice interesting options there it's gonna be really cool this kind of you know allows you to light up a settlement a lot more easier and now that we have this fusion generator that's gonna be a lot more handy as well okay yeah we can turn that on and off which is cool and then looking at all these lighting options some nice variety here continuing on with power now we have some new stuff in the miscellaneous category that requires a terminal so some kind of cool new things to work with first off is the smaller light box we already had the big light box here but the smaller light box will allow people to make even more cool kind of you know pixelated creations and whatnot so let's see go ahead and connect these to the terminal and hop on we'll be able to cycle through those and then a cycling light as well kind of works the same way we go ahead and connect that to the terminal then we'll be able to control that we'll see if there's anything else oh wait so yeah those two things are controlled by a terminal so let's go ahead and hop on the terminal and see what we can do with them so it's really what you could do before basically um you got the light box control you can set a color or you can randomize colors so i'm just going to go ahead and randomize and they're all going to be set random so you can actually go up to these lights just click e on the pc of course and change the light cycle through same with these so it really makes it really cool if you want to make some really extravagant um you know kind of colored creation you can just connect these to a terminal and then you know go to town you can really just do whatever you want uh, just by going up and clicking them so i thought that was really cool really nice addition there moving on we've also got a little bit more in this miscellaneous category we've got the oversized nixie tube so let's go ahead and place a few of those i've got a nifty idea <laughs> So if I go ahead and attach these all to a source of power, let's go ahead and do that. Cause that would also work there. So these are kind of the really cool lights. I think these were in the fallout three trailer, I believe in DC and like, um, you guys know what I'm talking about where they start out in the bus and you guys know what I'm talking about. Anyways. So you go up and click, hit these and you can literally just change the numbers right there. So I'm sure you guys know where I'm going with this. Aha. Yes. 2017 for me. Right? Yeah. Okay. So we've only got one more thing in the miscellaneous category. Let's go ahead and hop back into the workshop mode. And it's all the way at the back. It's the decontamination arch, which is obviously something a lot of people, um, you know, it's like really cool that we're going to be able to, you know, have this in our settlements. So let's go ahead and attach this to Python. And we're good to go. So the, the way this works, very simply, if you have some kind of radiation, you can see in the bottom left, I have a little bit of radiation. Let's go ahead and test this bad boy out. Activate walk through you're good it's all gone just like that and we can get the rest of the health ready there too so that's all that we've got with uh you know miscellaneous category of power but there's still more in the power category and it's all the way at the end with neon lights so very simply you have a bunch of different lighting kits here that you can mess around with all kinds of colors so if i want to go in and just do you know a b c they kind of snap next to each other which is very cool i can do this with all the different color types really easily just have to be connected or i mean really the house needs to be connected to a power source i'm sure you guys know how to do that by now and then we got the nice generic open sign as well so obviously you can do so much with this you can there's there's so much you could do lots of labeling lots of just you know cool kind of lights so once again let's go ahead and set the game to nighttime so we can kind of see how these things light up very cool kind of got that cycling animation there and these nixie tube lighting they really pop up really nicely there do i have to unactivate that Jeez. yeah i guess you do <laughs> that was just going on forever and ever and ever so that's all we have with our lighting options our next category with new items is defenses and so the only new category within subcategory i guess you could call it is traps so we got some new traps obviously we saw in the trailer some really cool options so just going to test a few out and show you guys here first off is the trap door so obviously if you walk over this it's just going to 
let you through just like that into some awful kind of trap that you could set up at the bottom so that's kind of a cool concept definitely could do a lot of things with that we also have some different kind of spring traps on the ground so just for example the normal spring trap here produces one defense it also is very brutal let's just go ahead and Ugh. yeah got the nice blood gushing sound effect going on there so that's definitely something that uh would obliterate uh, you know anything that comes near it Let's go ahead and set this other version of a spring trap called the powered spring trap. We'll go ahead and put that right there. Then, of course, connect it to power because it requires power. Okay, so this is something that you'll actually need to use some kind of switch for or a pressure plate. Obviously, that would make sense to uh, attach this to a pressure plate. If somebody steps on it, then it will go ahead and spring forward and really, really hurt, obviously. <laughs> so, very cool trap there. Let's see, did I miss one over here? No, I didn't miss one over here. We also have the saw blade trap, which <laughs> is also very devilish and uh, very uh, intimidating. Go ahead and attach that. So you can, again, connect connect this to some kind of um, you know on-off switch, and that would work as well, some kind of pressure plate. Um, but yeah, you can hear the nice cutting sound effect as it's slicing through my flesh. <laughs> Um, so that is also another trap. And then finally, we've got the spike trap, which is already has kind of an integrated, um, you know, pressure plate system. So each time I step on one of these traps, automatically spikes will come up and really, really hurt me. Of course, you can incorporate this with a lot of different connectors and switches like you could before. So some nice, interesting new options there. We're gonna hop back into the workshop menu and look at the next category, which is resources. And we actually have something new here, something or a few things new that people probably didn't realize. And bam, we've got a powered water pump. So this is really cool because this means that in certain you know areas, certain settlements where hey, you know, there's no water around, you can't you know put the giant pumps in the water. And then these normal t tiny little water pumps, they only produce three water, so it's just not, it's not um, you know feasible. You know, it's not reasonable. However, we've got this new powered water pump. So if you go ahead and connect that to a generator, it's gonna pump water out of the ground and produce more water for you. So kind of a cool little, uh, you know, resource there we can mess with. And we've also got garden plots, which are very, very cool as well. For the same kind of reason, if you're in some kind of settlement that doesn't have a lot of dirt, which there are settlements that are like entirely concrete, which is like, you know, where do you get your food? It doesn't make sense. You can just go up on a second story or go on the concrete ground, do some garden plots, and then, hey, build some carrots. You know, put these here. Make room and, you know, have some food, some resources right here in a place where it really doesn't, didn't make sense before. Now you could do it because of the garden plot. You can do this anywhere, essentially, any kind of flat surface, which is a very cool option. And finally, there are no new stores and no new kind of crafting workbenches you can create, but there are cages, a brand new category in the entire kind of Wasteland Workshop menu. So you could build a lot of different varieties of cages. You've got your small cages, medium cages, large cages, of course, the arena and miscellaneous. We're going to go through all of these. So these are obviously are some of the smaller kind of creatures that you can catch using this new system. And you've got this giant explanation here. I'm just going to kind of leave it on the screen for a second here, but I am going to make a separate video kind of going more in depth on how this cage system works. So got the cat cage, the dog cage, the mole rat cage, I don't know why you want a mole rat, and mutant hound. So all of these require power, you'll need some kind of generator or pylon system like I've set up here in order to make sure these things are working. And once you have them on, they're going to actively be, um, you know, catching creatures for you. Or, you know, in the process of attracting whatever you need. But you will need certain specific catered, uh, you know, resources in order to capture these things so you know for example to catch a feral ghoul cage in the medium category i'm gonna need some mongrel dog meat you know to get a gunner i'm gonna need some bottle caps because gunners are greedy right in order to get an insect of some kind <laughs> i'm gonna need copper not copper mole rat meat so jet for raiders obviously that makes sense raiders love jet and then super mutant cage so these are just different colors i mean they're really not um, unique in any other way than that, but of course we'll need to attach all of these to the uh, to the generator and string that like that. So just different colors; they all kind of look a little bit different. Yeah, <laughs> you've got some uh, 
some nice chems in there. I don't know what kind of, I guess all of the, you know, the creatures and, you know, things you're going to catch are really dumb because it seems like these are not very, uh, not very convincing cages to me, traps in general. So you can capture Brahmin. So obviously this is in the large cage category. I'm going to try and situate these. These are huge. Of course, the death clock cage is going to be massive as well. Okay, so we're going to place a Mirelurk cage there. It's kind of got some eggs in there to attract the uh, the Mirelurks, of course. Rad Scorpion. Rad Stag, which has carrots, which is kind of funny. And then the Yaogawai, which needs Rad, rad Stag meat. It's kind of like they build on each other. So let's go ahead and connect all of these together, like so. And so these are huge. These are massive, obviously, as you can tell. And they have whatever you're trying to catch in there. So as long as they're powered, once again, it will actively be, you know, trying to catch something for you. And again, I'll have a more in-depth video explaining how that works. So now we've got arenas. So kind of the idea here is that you'll build some kind of enclosed area where things are going to fight each other. And then the way Bethesda has set it up is that you've got a blue team and a red team. So it says settlers assigned to this will be hostile to the other team, which makes sense. So again, kind of a more explanation here. I will make another video just, you know, kind of explaining how arenas work. So far, I've heard word on the street, especially from Mr. Maddie, is that uh, arenas don't work very well. It's kind of hard and finicky to get this to work out. You kind of, you know, assign people like you would. Like, for example, I could click on Ada and assign her to the red team, assign someone else to the blue team. But apparently it doesn't work so well, which is not great. You know, kind of wish things were working the way they should be working. And finally, the last few items are under the miscellaneous category of cages. And this first one is a big one. It's the beta wave emitter. So obviously you can tell it says creatures released from cages while this is turned on will be non-aggressive towards you and your settlers. But there are exceptions. So certain things like super mutants, for example, raiders, they will be hostile no matter what because they're just hostile. And, you know, there are a few exceptions to that for, for the most part, if you attach this to, you know, let's see, let's go ahead and attach this, place it right there kind of in between. So this thing is powered on. Let's see if it can power multiple things. Yeah, it looks like it's powering. Yeah, it won't stretch over there. Maybe that's just because it's an awkward angle. It powers over there. So this thing can power multiple cages, which is something interesting and uh, important to note. So that's kind of a way you can make some things uh, passive. You know, if you want them to kind of roam around your settlement, like a death claw just hanging out. That's kind of something I was thinking of. Uh, you could absolutely do that with that. And then finally, we have the quitting time siren. So this is something that has a switch on it. So go ahead and attach it to this. Once you activate it, you know, your settlers will know it's time to quit. At least that's what the, uh, let's go ahead and look at the calls nearby settlers to relax when turned on. So this is something that you're going to be using with your arenas. So, you know, once the battle is over, maybe you're doing like a, like a 3v3 between settlers and then, you know, they're still fighting, they're still fighting, they're not out of fighting mode, you'll have to activate this quitting time siren and that's exactly what will happen. They will, you know, be pacified and they're relaxed. That was all of the new items in the new Wasteland Workshop DLC. But before we go, I'd like to know which new item is the most exciting or most useful in your opinion for your game. There's a lot of new items to choose from. I'd probably say the new fusion generator is the most exciting thing for me. Also, the decontamination arch is really cool too. Share what you're thinking in the comment section below. All right, guys, today I shared a basic overview of every single new item in the Wasteland Workshop DLC for Fallout 4. And next time we will cover more Fallout on my channel. So stay tuned for Fallout 4 tips and tricks videos. If you learned something new, remember to hit that like button. I would really appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe for more Wasteland Workshop DLC coverage, survival mode, and general tips and tricks videos. Talk to you guys next time. Peace.